but Um, thank you so very much for having me today. I hope you've had a fantastic day. Um, are you all feeling incredibly inspired? <laughs> um, so I thought that um, I would just start by introducing myself and telling you a little bit about my journey uh, getting to uh, One Million Women. So I'm not a long-term green role model. I'm not a climate activist. Um, I'm just another member of society. And, um, and I used to be a cosmetics manufacturer. So my life was really different. It was all about overpackaging. It was all about how you get somebody's product off the shelf so I can get mine on. It was all about competition. Um, and it was all about secrecy uh, so nobody knew what we were doing so it was a really different life and I was totally disconnected uh, to climate change I had my head buried in the sand I went along thinking I'm just one person how can one person really make a difference and doesn't change happen when governments put in policies and when they do isn't that when you act, I could sit around a dinner table and I could, I could talk about climate change. I could actually discuss the dire consequences if we don't all act collectively. And I could leave the dinner table and just carry on business as usual. So for me, there was this real deep disconnect about being aware and actually translating that into, into my life. I, didn't, I actually didn't even have recycling sorted. And, um, and I think actually, I think it is, a, it is um, something in a lot of us. When you don't know enough about something, it is so much easier to just shy away from, from doing anything um, than it is to actually you know, tackle it head on. And I know for me, it was not knowing enough about what to do when it comes to action on climate change. Um, and I, and it was this fear of feeling silly that, you know, I didn't want anyone else to know. And so, um, and so I did nothing. But the very short story is I had an epiphany and I changed. And it happened in the middle of 2006. And I realized that climate change was not somebody else's issue. It was actually all about me. It was all about my health, my well-being. It was all about my family. It was all about my friends. And it was all about our future. And so I just decided to you know, to stop making excuses and do something about it. But I think that although the epiphany probably actually took, you know, the process of a year, the thing that truly changed my life forever was getting my electricity bill down by 20%. So when I got my electricity bill down and I saw that I saved money and pollution, that's what did it. It was that one simple action I did something and I saw a result. And I thought, oh my God, what if millions and millions and millions of us were doing that one action? How incredible that would be. And so as you do, um, I decided to start a women's movement. And I wanted to reach women from the city to the bush. I wanted to reach millions and millions of women and, and share my story and share that all I did was this and that it changed my life forever. And so I started One Million Women after a couple of years of research um, at the end of 2009. And One Million Women um, empowers, it mobilizes, it inspires, um, but most importantly, it um, shows you how to live with the least impact on the planet. We are not an environmental movement or organization. We're not a lifestyle website. We are a movement and we are fighting the climate crisis head on um, through the way we live. So One Million Women is really specific. We focus on women and girls 
and of the developed world of wealthy countries such as Australia. And we um, show you how to live with the least impact on the planet. Um, we focus on the key areas of daily life, energy savings, um, food waste. Uh, we focus on the, this crazy appetite for overconsumption. We talk about how you get from A to B with the least impact on the planet. We focus on sustainable fashion. We talk about investing and divesting and the economic power of women. And forevermore, we will not only be showing you how to live a low carbon life, but how to transition to a zero carbon lifestyle. And we've come a long way since we launched. Um, we're now at half a million women. Our blog last year got four million views. Our Facebook gets five and a half million reach uh, every um, week. And in 2013, we won an award from the United Nations for the work that we do. And to all the blokes in the room, this is not about being anti-bloke. In fact, we love blokes. Um, this is simply about dialing up the, um, the power of women. And strategically, women make 80, and it was a strategic choice because women make 85% of the consumer decisions that affect the household's carbon footprint. In Australia, we are over 51% of the Australian electorate. We are a powerful niche market and we have extraordinary power in the consumer, um, in the consumer marketplace. But One Million Women is all about sweeping lifestyle change. And I have to say that it is an incredibly hard thing to be pushing. Sweeping lifestyle change when it comes to fighting the climate crisis, it's a key solution. It's an absolute key solution. But it unfortunately is the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to change, and I don't mean the people in this room, but in the general public, it is a really hard thing to focus on, is how you truly and honestly and profoundly change the way that you live so that you have the least impact on the planet. Um, I think what happens is that when it comes to looking after the environment, when it comes to changing the way you live, it's almost like it's an adjunct to who you are. I live like this. Oh, and I also do these things over here to look after the planet. Where we've got to get to, and it doesn't matter if it's just small steps that lead to bigger steps, but where we've got to get to that it's not sitting over here as an afterthought that it's simply just part of who we are. And it's hard because um, we have to do it within this structured framework of our high consumption society. Um, and we have to get ourselves outside of that framework. And I know that once you truly internalize climate change, when you truly internalize that we all as individuals and as a collective have extraordinary power, to change the world, then I think changing the way you live actually becomes a lot easier when you feel it instead of just thinking it. And I know that. I can guarantee you that because that's exactly what happened to me. I was doing nothing. I was in the camp of inaction. And once I truly understood that how I live, every choice I make is the is 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 this is shaping the kind of world that I want to live in. Um, and once you get to that point, changing the way you live um, is actually an easy thing to do. But Australia is a large and wealthy country of only 24 million people. And um, we spend 10.5 billion on stuff that we barely or never use. And that stuff just gets thrown into landfill. We are driving our cars 20% more. We're wasting 20% of the electricity that we purchase. We waste one in five shopping bags of food. So it's like going into the shopping center, um, grab, getting five bags of food and chucking one in the bin on your way home. Um, and 
we're drowning in stuff. And there's this misguided belief in wealthy countries that the more stuff we have, the happier we'll be. Um, and I think that, you know, as a society as a whole, we can't just tick a box and think or send a letter to a politician or march in the streets or give to charities. I mean, we must do all of that. That's truly important. But we can't just do that and think that we're doing our bit with climate action if over here we live our lives filled with overconsumption. And I just want you to take a moment to imagine, just think of the difference and the impact we'd have um, if entire populations bought 50% less stuff, if we literally ate 50% less meat, um, if we saved 50% of the food that we, that we waste and 20% of the electricity um, that we waste, if we drove our cars left, if, if we, you know, less, if we shared more, if we left overpackaged goods to, to sit on the shelf to gather dust, just imagine the difference that we would make if a million households just got their electricity consumption down by 20%. And let me tell you, 20% is the easiest. It's the low-hanging fruit. Every single person in this room could go home and do it now. It's turning stuff up the wall. It's putting clothes on the, the line instead of the dryer. If we just reduced by 20%, we would save $240 million and we would shut down two coal-fired power stations. We should never underestimate the power of individual action. And that's the essence of One Million Women. We give these bite-sized chunks with real and tangible results. You go to the website, you can see it all there, it's all free. Um, and the idea is that just act, just act, just do one thing, just one thing. Because I promise you one thing leads to another and another and another. One thing, one thing, and it doesn't matter if action comes before education or awareness when it comes to climate change. Just act, just start straight away because action leads to more action. Action leads to building your confidence. Action leads to finding your voice, putting pressure on, on politicians and others. And ultimately for one million women, action in our daily lives leads to profound and sweeping lifestyle change. Um, so I'd just like you to take a moment and to think about, about you, about, about the way you live and think to yourself, am I doing enough? Am I, every little bit counts. Never think that a small action isn't something great because a small action done by millions makes a huge difference. Unfortunately, we are living in a climate emergency and it takes, it will take all of us. It's going to take governments and countries. It's going to take corporates and big business, but it's going to take individuals and households and communities and cities for us all to act and us all to act at the same time. So we are all incredibly powerful through the way that we live. So I would just like to finish off by, um, by getting everybody, uh, it's been a long day and I'm sure you're all feeling tired, but I would like to get your toes tapping and I'd like to get you jigging in your seats and I'd like to get you standing up because, um, you don't have to stand up yet, but last year we um, we transformed an old Aussie song. We transformed it into an anthem from women for everybody. And the message is that only climate action gives us climate hope. And we launched our anthem just before the big Paris climate change conference that happened in December, where the world came together and agreed on um, keeping global warming to below two degrees and to pursue a 1.5 degree level. 
We launched our anthem ahead of the climate change conference. I went to the conference and talked about the importance of lifestyle change. And we got over a million views and our anthem was shown at the conference on four big screens and all around the world. And the next climate change conference is happening um, in a few weeks and we are, we are relaunching our anthem and our goal is to get it to two million views. Its message is simple. We are using the glorious power of music to convey to everybody that only climate action gives us climate hope. And so what I would love, we're going to film it if that's okay, and I would love you to dance, to clap, to <laughs> tap your toes, do whatever. And even if you can do it to the end of the first chorus, you're all going to know the song and you're all going to know the chorus. So even if you can just do it really energetically until the end of the first chorus, but keep going because if you want to, it's a five minute song. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that would be wonderful because I can then put that out through our One Million Women's social media channels and as the launch of the next stage of our anthem to get it to two million. Um, thank you so very much and here we go. So you got to go get To be 